Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Kime Report wherever you get your podcast. And if you're on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You can find us at Empire Media, A M P I R E. Thank you very much. Well, today it's Wednesday, August 10th. Birthday shout out to my wife and congrats to my nephew, Matt, and his wife, Mackenzie, on the birth of their first child. Big news. Anyway, but you're here for the practice report, so let's get to it. Washington practice and shells today. They were supposed to be in pads. Change it up a little bit. Tomorrow will be a lighter day, So, but we got some stuff to talk about. First of all, I went over and watched new defensive line coach, Jeff Scanina, who was, of course, an assistant, but was elevated after the Sam Mills firing, just to see it's a change in a group. I don't think he's going to change his approach, and he doesn't. He was always involved before this change. He was the guy who would demonstrate when they're coming around the bags, he would demonstrate what they had to do with their hands, what they, how, the, how the hips have to be. He would kind of not chastise, but get on a guy like William Bradley King or not just offer reminders, some strong reminders, but not in a bad way, but in a good way, because he knows what it takes to get it done. So that's something he's done. It's something that you saw again today. One of the benefits of Scanina is that he played 17 years in the NFL and he came into the league as a seventh round draft pick. Guys like that who last that long are impressive because they figured out what they need to do to get it done. And then he has an ability to teach that to these guys. And I do think it gives him a little bit more um, firepower behind his words when you can can bring that kind of resume to the game. Plus, if you saw this guy, the dude is still jacked and looks like he could still play. So I'm, I'm pretty confident he may think the same thing as well, at least for one snap or two. But the point is he does bring some energy to to this group and i think that's a good thing i also think i think a big key here will be holding this group even more accountable because i think that's something that we we talked yesterday and i'm sure you've heard a lot about how the defensive line code excuse me the defensive line really would have been happy with this change a year or two ago but now that it's been made the onus is on them to show hey this is what you can now do if it was all just it was it this group or was it this coach now you've got to prove that it wasn't you guys, it was here. So go out and do it. But with Scanina, and one thing that you see with him, and like for today, for example, today, I'm watching a drill where there's where you have three defensive linemen who are serving as offensive linemen. Scanina will, and then you have two defensive tackles there, and you, they have to react to where the offensive line goes. They have to react with technique, footwork, how they play a certain, how they play a certain uh, slant or block, et cetera. And Scanina will stand behind the defensive lineman and point which way that the offensive lineman has to go so they don't know what's coming. So with with this, he would you saw like Fider, rookie Federian Mathis going through it. And Scanina would have him repeat the rep, repeat the rep, repeat the rep until he saw what he needed to see. But the other thing that he can do, he can go in there and demonstrate how he wants it done. And you could see him on one time going down there and kind of pointing to his left leg. This is where you got to put the weight. This is how you have to handle this block. And he can demonstrate it because he's got that knowledge and knows how to do it. And again, I think that carries more weight with players as long as they respect you as a coach as well. Just because you played, it's not going to carry the day. But if you played and you know how to teach it, that does matter. And I think that does resonate. And also, when when he was showing this, you had Warren Sapp five yards behind. And he would, Warren Sapp is not a boisterous presence here. He is a guy who will, he'll, he'll maybe show them, hey, you do this, rip move, try this. He's not out there to become a coach here. He's out there to help in a very temporary fashion, but that's what he was doing. So after a couple of reps, he might do that. Anyway, back in with Ryan Kerrigan, I know a lot of talk about him. Ryan's really more of a quiet presence out here, and he'll talk to guys on the side. He'll he'll um, show, show guys something or talk to them if they have a question or if he can impart some wisdom, but he's not jumping in there and then showing, hey, guys, you got to do this, move, and this up. That's not his thing. He's a, he's again, he's somebody who's got a lot of knowledge and if you go to him or if he can go help you, he will. But I think he's being respectful of those who are actually coaching right now and serving as full-time coaches. Um, But with Scanina, what you'd also see is he might get on a guy or two, might hear an F-bomb, but it's done in a different way, more so as an exhortation than it is like some other coaches who may be doing it to kind of get it to chew out a guy and, and get him to do something better. But I think, I think he brings some energy and he brings that knowledge of a former player. So let's see where this group goes. But again, the onus is now on them.
All right. So a couple of things I want to talk about. Bobby McCain. He's had a pretty solid, consistent camp. Not great. Consistent. I think he's done a nice job. Keep in mind that this was a guy who signed here late in the spring last year. So he didn't have a lot of time with in this defense and also with this with this group of players. I think there was a bumpy start because of it. And I and you saw that his play in the second half of the year, I think, was much better than in the first half. And I think you're seeing a continuation of that this summer. He, again, not a budding pro bowler or all pro, but a guy who can not help them in a as a consistent player, smart guy back there. Today, he made two plays against Carson Wentz. The first one, my take from the sidelines, and again, you'd have to go back and watch the practice video, but my, my instant analysis was that Carson eyes Cam Sims on the left side coming across the middle. Bobby McCain reads that and breaks from his left across the middle and shot through there and almost picked it off, breaks it up instead. Later in the practice, um, Wentz tries to hit Terry McLaurin in a deep post against Kendall Fuller and and McLaurin has maybe a step on him, but McCain races over from the other side. Again, gets in front of McLaurin, reaches up, gets the ball, hits the ground. Just a really nice play by Bobby McCain. I think he's had, again, a solid, consistent camp. I think that whole group has, and I think it's their familiarity with one another and in this defense. And speaking of that, let's get to Kendall Fuller because I told you he's had a good camp. So I asked him today if he, if he agreed that, Maybe this was is his best camp. Well, he didn't go there, but what he did say is the reason he feels he's having a really good camp is because it's his second year playing on the outside. When he was here the first time, he was a slot corner. He goes to Kansas City, he's a slot corner, and then sometimes a safety. And I think he did play a little bit outside, but it, he struggled some there. And then when he came he, back here, he was a slot corner. So gets moved to the outside last year, And it takes a minute or two to adjust. And one of the things he said is he's now starting to understand how offenses are trying to attack him and he can react accordingly. Sometimes that's understanding route combinations or being able to read the quarterback and based off a route, based off alignment, et cetera. But that's where he feels like he's done a really nice job. And I asked him about, well, some people say too, that it's because you're healthier. And he goes, he went back to, second year on the outside as much as anything else. So there you go. Now you know. Uh, I also wanted to talk about uh, Cole Turner, the rookie rookie Cole Turner tight end. Did not practice again today, nor did John Bates, or as Samuel did, De'Ami Brown did. Uh, one of the things with Turner and Bates, Bates coming off the left calf injury practice yesterday, was on the side field today, and Turner has missed time with that hamstring. But I was watching Turner after practice working on his footwork with an assistant coach. And it was really, it just shows you the details and the intricacies of how these things have to go. And they were working on the proper step against a particular look, how you have to take your front step and then your back step, how it has to be, where it has to be, and then why it has to be there and the leverage it can give you when you're trying to make a certain block, et cetera. Those are the kind of things that rookies have to get used to. And even Jahan Dotson was talking about that, some of the nuances of the game the intricacies. That's what can separate a guy and takes a guy from here from one level to another. And I think with Turner, a big key for him is getting that footwork down in the pat in the block game, because we've seen that he can he can help in the pass game, but he's gonna have to help as a blocker too. And a lot of that comes back to his footwork. In that air raid offense he played in college, it doesn't really prepare you to block, but that so that's why they have to work on it here. But again, he spent it was a good 10 to 15 minutes after practice that he spent out there. And I'm just telling you, it was like standing there kind of in your stance and just taking a step. And then, and then your, your next, your step with your right. Then how do your how does your left foot move with that? Then step with your, to your left. How does your right foot go with that? So just, you know, that's the stuff that can make a difference down the road. Also wanted to talk about quarterback, Sam Howell. And I mentioned the other day after Cole Kelly was cut, but I kind of feel like Howell's steadily progressed firmly there as a number three quarterback so let's not go there that's what he is and that's okay what you want to see from him is steady progression he's gotten to the point where he throws a pretty nice ball he gets the ball out with a pretty in a pretty good rhythm and he's been fairly accurate so it's been a nice progression for him let's see how what the next step is what do you do in the preseason games because he's obviously going to get a lot of work so it's just something to watch again don't go anywhere other than he's a number three quarterback. 
can he develop and do something that maybe he could be a good backup next year to Carson Wentz? Um, right now, Taylor Heineke's that guy, and Heineke has had a solid camp. So again, let's not go there, but just know that he that Howell has steadily progressed. The next step is to show something in the preseason games. How does he look there? And you know, so there you go. One of the things, too, that I wanted to talk about is wide receiver Kelvin Harmon. Um, he's had, again, another guy who's had a solid camp. The hard part for Harmon will be he just doesn't run as well as some of these other receivers. He is more physical, I think, in tight areas and contested catch areas. He can do a good job. But does that quickness or the foot speed, how much of that will be a factor for him? I think it's, it certainly has limited him in the past. And when you watch him run compared to the others, He's just not as fluid as them, but he does play tough. And so that's one thing I think that has kept him around even to this point. It's why they would bring him back last year on the practice squad, for example. I felt like as a rookie, he did a nice job inside the 20 at times, not so much as a touchdown target, but as a guy who could catch a third and four with somebody on him um, in that in that offense. Of course, that team wasn't very good that year, but you get the point. So, but I still think it's, I think it's going to be a tough road for him to make it. Right now, I'd have Dax Milner as their sixth guy because I know how much they like his route running. And I know that he can help as a kick and a punt returner. So he can fill multiple roles and save you a spot somewhere else. Um, I think if a guy like Harmon makes it, um, it would be as a seventh guy. And that's where I think it might be hard to keep him there. But I think you could probably sneak him on the practice squad if you wanted to. But he does. He is a guy that is, has been, again, a solid, steady camp. He made a nice catch in the end zone the other day. The one question you always have with him is when he's facing a top corner, because on this play he wasn't, if he's facing a starting corner or a legitimate backup corner league, how does that play look? That's always what they look at. They're not looking at, I always tell you, they're not looking at just the result. It's the result and then who you're facing, et cetera. So if you start making plays down here, they're going to put you, give you, put you in more chances against higher level players guys who you know are going to make the roster to so get a better feel for you but again Harmon solid camp one of the things that I really like watching Jahan Dotson is the way he sells his routes and for, for the let me back up one minute too because one of the things he said that he feels he's getting better on in the offense is some of those intermediate timing routes and some you know that's getting used to proper depth angles and then the throw from Carson Wentz but today he has a route where Again, he sells that go route. And I think he sells his routes as well as anybody out here. And, and on this play, he sells it, drives the defensive back off, little comeback, nice catch, and just a nice, a nice play. But again, it starts with his ability to sell a route. The thing I've liked about him is I think he knows how to read a defensive back or at least play maybe chess with the defensive back, for lack of a better uh, word, I guess, but play chess with them and anticipate how they may react to a play or a particular look, and it does help them get open. Um, it's why I think the kid's going to be a good player. Finally, well, there are two more things. Um, one, sometimes, again, I pointed out what Cole Turner was doing. This is what I like to see when guys are on the sidelines during a special teams drill, for example. What else are they – what are the guys who aren't involved? What do they do? So today I'm watching uh, Brian Robinson and Antonio Gibson – work on some pass block protection stuff. They've gone over this stuff before, but running backs coach Randy Jordan was there with them. And really, the, the it was really as much for Brian Robinson to get him to learn how to sink his hips and, and pop into the, um, explode into the, the, the rusher. And then how, like, if you come up with a shoulder, how you then have to turn or you get your hands right. So just little things like that. And they spent a good five minutes just going over this Nothing, nothing huge, but it's those little things like taking advantage of every minute of practice is which, especially for a rookie, it's how they start to learn and progress. So just something I wanted to point out. So let's see how Brian Robinson develops in pass protection, because that's always a key for a running back to get on the field. Finally, let's finish up with Carson Wentz, because why not? He's the quarterback. I know some people maybe get tired of hearing about Carson Wentz, but listen, He's the most important player on that offense right now. As long as the offensive line protects him, then he can be really good. And if they don't, then any quarterback's going to have some issues. But I think he had another, I think, solid morning. Now, again, no full pads. 
Um, I think there's been a steady progression this week in the past game as they start to get better with some of the timing routes. That's like I said, it's that's where they're starting to see some of the progress. Not perfect, but there were a couple throws. There have been a couple throws the last couple of days. We say like yesterday, Wentz was on target. Today, there were some good throws and there were some throws that were missed. Saw him sail one to Dax Milne. There's a tendency when he has too much pressure where his base gets wider. And that's when you start to see them him air mail a throw a little bit. So if you see that and you're watching the game, go back and look at his base to see how it may be compared to some of his other throws. Again, we saw that today. But then I also saw a nice little a nice out route to Terry McLaurin, where again he gets it in um, with with Kendall Fuller on him. And then later though, he and McLaurin, there is a pass where McLaurin starts to turn. And as before he even turns, the ball's already by him to the left. So, and it was too far inside. He wasn't going to get it. So there was a mistake on that play. And that's the sort of thing that when you when you go back after that rep, you talk about it. You go back in the meeting room, you talk about it. And then you have to rep it better the next time. Those are still some of the things you see. I don't sense anything other than, um, uh, I guess, I wouldn't say encouragement. I don't think that's the right word, but I don't certainly don't sense any concern over by the coaches over the progression of things. Um, and I had even had one coach tell me what what the narrative is out there is far different than what they see on film. We'll see. Again, games will reveal all. But that's where they're at right now. And that's where I'm at right now with the practice report on Wednesday, August 10th. I'll be back with another report on Thursday. We'll talk to you next time.